Many of the legendary Pokémon in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are locked behind items called Mysterious Shards. They're very rare and hard to get, and we're here to teach you everything you need to know on how to get them. How's it going everyone? It's Abdali here bringing you guys another awesome tips and tricks tutorial video for Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Today's video is showcasing everything you need to know about Mysterious Shards and how to get them to unlock the rest of the legendaries within Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. It's going to be a great time. Thanks so much for watching. Now, before we get started, I do want to say thank you to each and every one of you guys who are subscribed to the channel. We've got tons of Pokemon content over here. We've got a 100% Let's Play that we're doing via stream. And of course, we got even more Tips and Tricks series. So definitely give those a watch. All right, so let's get started with this tutorial by teaching you guys the prerequisites of how to get all of these mysterious shards. Now, you're going to need to beat the Elite Four. You're going to need to complete the Sinnoh Pokedex, meaning seeing every single one of the Pokemon within the game, and then going over to Professor Rowan, talking to Professor Oak, and then he's going to teach you about a location called Raminus Park. Now, once you head on over here, it's going to be at the very bottom of the map, uh, pretty much south of the city of Oraberg. And uh, once you head on over that way, you're going to be greeted with none other than a reception desk, um, a little area here, and then the park itself. Now, the park itself is going to be super plain and bare simply because you can't do anything unless you have the currencies, which are slates within the game. Now, I'll show you this right over here. This is where you're going to exchange your mysterious shards for different slates. And the game is going to force you to purchase a whole bunch of discovery slates before you can have access to any of the other slates available here. Um, as you can see over here, the uh, the Kanto slates, you've got the Soul slates, Squall slates, Oceanic slates, Tectonic slates, Stratospheric, Genome, and Distortion slates. All of these require mysterious shards. And as you can see over here from the Genome slate and the other ones, it's going to take three of the small mysterious shards in order to exchange for one of the slates, or if you're lucky enough, to find one of the large Mysterious Shards, you'll be able to exchange it for a one-to-one -one ratio. Now that you guys know exactly what the Mysterious Shards do within the game and how legendary Pokemon are locked behind them, it's time to teach you exactly how to get them and how to get them the easiest. Now, doing this solo is going to be pretty hard, so you may need some friends, but it's not impossible. Anyway, if you don't have the Explorer Kit, talk to the man in Eterna City, go into his house, and get the Explorer Kit and start learning how to use that. You're also going to need internet for this. Like I said earlier, playing alone without internet is very hard and time consuming, but internet is your best bet. So if you click on internet, you have a couple options. You could just go generically on the internet and hope and pray that other people are randomly collecting Diglett points. Or you can go with a link code. If you have like-minded teammates, up to 10 people, you can grind this together and get 40 Diglett points within literally a minute. Anyway, I'll show you that a little bit more. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna click on yes, we're gonna save the adventure and we're gonna go down. As you can see, we're right outside the Orberg City Pokemon Center, uh, a really easy place to fly to. This is going to be one of the places that I found was really easy to find a lot of Diglett points. Now, you'll notice over here that there's a zero out of 40 uh, meter that way. Now, once we're officially connected to everyone in this little local area, we can see that locally, on this internet, in this like region, in this biome, in this hemisphere, whatever you want to call it, there have been 10 Diglett points that people have found, and that's exactly what our meter is at. Now, the great thing about that is that this spot right over here, to the north, is my favorite spot to grind Diglett points. You want to find a little Diglett on the ground, and once you do so, he will give you a little point. And that's exactly what this looks like right over here. Um, likewise, if you see a Doug Trio, he will give you three Diglett points, which is three times as much. So go ahead and pick this up, and you'll notice that the 10 will go to 11 after picking it up. Now remember, like I said earlier, this is going to be a group effort. Meaning, if you're doing this alone, you're going to have to really walk around and collect these Diglett points all by yourself. But if you're online, you never know who's going to be turning a corner finding a Diglett like this, and then helping your cause. One of the great things about doing this in this specific area of north of Orberg City is that you can easily go into any one of those biomes and reset the area and then walk all the way around again. So for every couple of seconds, you're going to get one or two Diglett points. Now multiply this times all 10 of your friends that are available to play this over here. Oh my gosh, it's an absolute 
madness. Um, I've gotten it to a point where we get the full diglet meter in about a minute. It's so much fun. Anyway, so once you're over there and you have the, um, yeah, there was a, oh, I got a Doug Trio right there. Hey, that's pretty awesome. Anyway, once the meter is at 40, you literally have four minutes to start digging within the walls. And if you have a whole bunch of people nearby, you can easily piggyback off of them. As soon as they start initiating at a wall, you can then go over there and do so. Now, one of the things that not too many people know is that you can press the R button on the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller in order to ping the area. And once you ping the area, you'll be able to reveal all of your different orange spots that are on the small mini-map. And then press the A button on it and then start digging away. Now, since you have a timer on you for four minutes, you have to really ask yourself, do you really want to waste your time digging out a small sphere or a a fossil or a large sphere or any of the gorgeous boxes for statues or do you want to quickly get in get out and then find the next area so that's really up to you i would highly suggest breaking the wall down if you've already gotten a little glimpse of what exactly those items are because like i said earlier you have four minutes and then once the four minutes are done you have to collect another 40 diglet points in order to activate the boosted chances now, you may be wondering, hey, can you get a mysterious shard without the diglet points, without the diglet double time? Yeah, you absolutely can, but the odds of that are very slim to none. So, I wouldn't recommend it. I would really only recommend grinding these shards if you are in that four minute period. Now, the four minute period also boosts the shiny rates for random Pokemon that you can find, but that's not what we're talking about here. We want to get mysterious shards and we want to get them now. So anyway, as you can see over here, that's what the Mysterious Shards look like. They're pretty interesting. You can get the small one, which is very, very hard to find because, you know, if you're not covering that part of the map uh, with your hammer and chisel set, then you won't be able to find it. But likewise, if you find the large one, it's worth three of the small ones. And in my history of playing hours of this game, it's taken me at least 45 minutes, maybe an hour to get a couple of these things. Just keep on grinding and you'll be able to get it. And if you guys want to join the Abdallah Nation Discord, feel free to do so. There's going to be tons of people digging in the underground with specific group codes that you can join up that are like-minded, that are here for Mysterious Shards. So anyway, that's going to be it. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If this video helped you out with getting Mysterious Shards, be sure to smash that like button and share the video with a friend because we got tons more happening. All right, that's going to be it. We'll see you on the next one. Take care.